I can cut that right out. Peace. Coming to the divine name of Shah Keem, Justice Allah. Today we're here representing Peace TV, doing an interview with um, A.B. Boxdale, one of the brothers that's doing his um, community work out there in the communities, trying to help make a difference. How you doing today, sir? I'm all right, man. You know, I'm just chilling. Oh, that's what's up. So, tell people, uh, what is it that you do out there and what, what's your mission? Uh, basically, man, you know, I just, um, you know, get involved with the community positively, man. You know, I got, uh, you know, I got a big attachment with the kids, man. Big comfort zone with them, man. You know, from growing up with a lot of them, man. A lot of their parents, man. So, you know, I run a little basketball leagues for the summer, man. You know, do little um, toy giveaways, man. You know, entertainment, cause uh, you know, right now I got my own record label, Born and Raised Records. So. You know, and that's basically what I do, man, is just step out to the community, man, and be a part of it, man. Oh, so you got a record label. Are there any brothers that you um you work with or are you on your own? How is that working out? Well, um, you know, I basically deal with a couple dudes from the community, man, that I, I grew up, man. Shout out to uh, S. Dot Nitty, man, you know. Uh, free beat drunk, man, you know. Just a couple of dudes, man, I deal with, man, you know, and, um... We, uh, we just put it together, man, did this thing legally, man, went down there, man, got the paperwork set up and everything, man, now we in the studio, you know, like I said, we do a couple shows, man, and um, we just trying to progress, man, and uh, like right now, we in contact with a couple mainstream people, so, you know, we just keep pushing, man, you know, keep doing what we doing, man, and um, the label's definitely gonna, um, Get gonna take off. Well, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, cut that right out. Don't worry about that. Alright. Yeah, don't worry about that. Just cut that right out. Because you know you just pause it. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's very good, you know. We hear that you gave away a few turkeys and um, put on a few talent shows. Could you tell us what inspired you to do something like that? You know, just growing up in the hood, man, around um, a couple good dudes, man, and I seen the things they was doing, man, looking out for the kids, you know, looking out for, you know, kids like myself at one time, and, uh, you know, I wanted to do that, man, I wanted to be a part of that, man, so, you know, I promised myself and God, you know, one day I get a little older, get in a little, you know, better position, you know, I try to follow the steps, man, and, um, you know, what just encouraged me to do it bigger and better, man, is because, you know, a lot of dudes that, you know, was out here back then, they ain't here right now, you know, so it's just like, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm not never taking a place, you can never take nobody's place, whether they're, you know, in the jail or, you know, rest in the peace, you know, but it's like, you just gotta, it, 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 it's something that motivates, it's something with them not being here that motivates you to do it on their behalf too, you know. So, um, basically, like, no, nah, sir, I gotta do this for all my peeps that never made it, you know? Yeah. I hear what you're saying, you yeah. know? The brothers that are locked down, the brothers that didn't make it as far as, as this day, to be out here doing what they do. Some of them that are locked up or that are, that are deceased nowadays, we know those brothers had good visions and they were trying to do something positive. They even inspired younger people like yourself to do certain things when you were younger that you know now where they would have took it had they still been here, therefore you step up and say, you know, let me keep the fire, the flame burning, you know, I hear that. Yeah, so, um, how do you feel about, like, the violence and stuff like that? Do you think it's just going to go on or something that needs to stop, or what do you think about something like that as far as peace is concerned? I think, man, every, every human being should be entitled to peace, you know. Whether it's in their front yard, whether it's in a, you know, home, you know, apartment, wherever it may be, everybody's entitled to peace, man. So, you know, at some point in time, we all grow up, man, to see that, you know, the family that, you know, we want to, you know, take out to eat, the family that we want to bring on trips, we want them to have peace too, man. So, it's just about people, you know, as you grow, man, you mature, man, and, um, 
me you know brothers like myself and other you know brothers that's out here trying to do this music and you know trying to give back to the community positive they make a big impact on that so you know one thing you know one day things will change around man you never can say never man but right now like i said man everybody wanted a sense of peace so what do you say about like the law enforcement officials or like the um, the community leaders that would look at somebody like you and say to themselves, um, he's a negative, he's bad or he's negative. What do you want to say for them, you know, to get that stigma on you? Well, um, all I could basically say, you know, the stuff like that, man, is, you know, people like that should look themselves in the mirror. And once you look yourself in the mirror, you look at me and say, well, he's not that that bad of a guy after all, you know? Because at the end of the day, man, what I'm trying to do, man, it, 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 it's like they don't even have to, it's not even their business if I'm giving to my community, if I'm starting basketball leagues, if I'm, you know, trying to make it, trying to make my community feel more powerful and more, you know, respectable of living here, you know, so. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, as far as like, um, them thinking maybe you use negative means to get things accomplished, would you want to tell them as far as that's concerned, that, is, that um, they got the wrong idea about you, they think of you as just a street thug and somebody that they can't trust, you know, somebody that might have a bad attitude or a bad temper and stuff like that and that's going to blow up at any second. Whereas, me personally, I've been around you for years and I haven't seen nothing negative, nothing, no violence, tendencies, no negative attitudes, nothing that I could say to myself, he's uh, on the prone of uh, domestic violence or anything like that. All I've seen out of you was positive myself. Therefore, I'm saying, how do you feel about it, you know, them thinking you're going to do that way? Well, again, um, as I said, they can't take a look in the mirror, but the police and whoever else that judge me, that really don't bother me because they judge not only me, you know? So, um, you know, when they do do stuff like that, man, I kind of just, like, walk it off because, see, if you make it to, if you, if you try to, like, defend yourself, even in a peaceful way, they are still to try to entice you to bring it to, like, a a violent temper, you know, so I just try to like stay away from them guys because, um, like I said, if they take a look in the, in the mirror their self, the tactics that the police, and it has been proven, a proven fact that the police has used, it's been brutal and uh, violent and horrific, and that's just towards the black community, you know, so for them to look at me and say, I'm a monster, I look at them and say, they're the monster. I hear that, I hear that. So basically, they try to get the attention away from themselves by placing it on someone else. All right, so um, what are your next endeavors? What do you have coming up that you would like to um, have people jump on board with or look out for? You got any videos coming out, any movies or anything like that? Yeah, I got a couple of um, uh, uh, movie, man. Uh, brother right here, Shaquem, man, produced it and everything, man. Couple videos, man. Um, Born and Raised movie, uh, the trap video, and I, I I got something going on for the uh, right now. I'm trying to put something together for the the Boston bombing victim. May they rest in peace, and may um, the ones that are you know going through the uh, tragic of getting their legs amputated, you know, may God be with them. And uh, right now, I'm just trying to put something together for them. Basically, an event. And it's not, I'm not going to say it's to raise money, really, because, you know, as we all know, the Boston One Fund has plenty of money, you know, but what we can, what, what we're able to do, we will do, but this event is just to bring, like, a, a sense of uh, comfort back to the city, um, to bring unity, and it's basically the neighbor to neighbor, you know, so we all can meet each other, and, you know, because it's, it's like a lot, um, a lot of chaos right now, and, you know, even within my community, people are, you know, still feeling a little shaky. So it's like, you know, let's show them what we're really about. And, and uh, the name of the event is uh, Born and Raised Boston Strong. Right now I have Def Jam um, 
made a, uh, Def Jam made a commitment to uh, jumping on board. I'm also working with the um, city of Boston. Um, I want to thank uh, Councilor Yancey, Charles Yancey, and uh, Brother Duke, Ernest Duke. And um, I got Coca-Cola. Uh, they said uh, I'm in progress talking to them and a couple other people. So, you know, and like I said, we're going to uh, have booths there. So if, if you want to come down and, uh, you know, you don't have to rent a booth. All you got to do is sign a paper. It's limited booths. I mean, yeah, it's limited booths. So make sure you come down there first come, first serve. And if you was to uh, sell, you know, one of your, uh, sorry, your merchandise, if you came down here with your music CD, uh, we're asking for you to give 25% to the charity, and the charity will be there, and we will be giving the money at the end of the night. So, um, and, you know, from there, it's just going to be entertainment, face painting, and, uh, you know, a basketball tournament, and et cetera. Oh, that's very positive. That's very nice, man, you know. So when you were growing up here in uh, Bromley Heath, what were like some of the things that that uh, really touched you, made you feel part of the community? Is that still here or has it disappeared? Uh, the thing that made me feel part of this community that we was uh, tenant management owned, um, TMC, we was first uh, not only in America, I believe, but in the world. And, um, you know, that was big. We was in uh, U.S. Times for that. And, uh, you know, that, that made me feel like, you know, God put me, you know, somewhere special. You know, um, I want to say thank you to Miss Haley. You know, she's been here all this time fighting for us. You know, and, um, you know, it's just a, a big privilege to be from here. It's a big privilege to be born and raised in uh, Jamaica Plain, Bromley Heath projects. Uh, again, Miss Haley, she was always on top of everything, made sure all the residents felt comfortable, made sure all the kids ate and had a good time, and made sure that we was privileged to go to them field trips. Um, it was just, it was, it was, it was nice. And uh, right now, no, you're not seeing that because uh, BHA had taken over, and, you know, basically now it's just a, a corporation that's running... Um, you know, business and, uh, you know, the residents being their business, um, not a family. So, you know, when you're doing business, you know, you, you're not really thinking with your heart. You're thinking with your mind. And, uh, you know, that's what they're doing right now, thinking with their mind. You have a lot of homeless families that lost their, um, you know, housing due to BHA's, uh, I would say, ruthless um, rules and regulations. And um, it's not right. You know, and, uh, people are being forced to move out of their houses that they've been in for years, you know, because BHA feels that they don't need the comfort zone that they've been in, and like I said, it's not right. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from as far as that's concerned, you know. Family day. Don't forget about family day. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hold on a second.